Hi, welcome back to this series of short videos introducing the principles of phylogenetics. In this video, I'm going to introduce the distance-based method UPGMA. If you haven't seen the other videos in this series, I recommend them so that this content will make sense to you. If you're watching on YouTube, it's right up there. So let's get started. UPGMA. UPGMA is one of two distance-based methods that are used to construct phylogenetic trees. The other one is neighbor joining, and I'll have a separate video about that. Both UPGMA and neighbor joining share some commonalities. One is that when working with a multiple sequence alignment and considering two sequences, S sub i and S sub j, we calculate a dissimilarity matrix between the sequences in our multiple sequence alignment. And that dissimilarity ma matrix will have some measure of distance between sequences. We call this distance, these distances D sub ij and the whole matrix D. We've already used this in a guide tree. And in a guide tree, we often use something really simple, like just the proportion of mismatch. And that is sufficient for a guide tree. But in phylogenetics, we want to use a more appropriate distance. And so we might start with the proportion of mismatch and then estimate a distance from that proportion, from those observed differences, and from some substitution model. And if you are not familiar with substitution models, you should see the nucleotide substitution model video in this series. All distance, uh, lots of different types of distance are usable. and we might consider just the distance that we encounter in our everyday lives, which is a metric distance. And that kind of distance, all metric distances, obey the triangle inequality. The triangle inequality is, uh, in plain English, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. And so the distance IK here is never greater than uh, the sum of the distances if we have some imposing point between them. In UPGMA, we use a special kind of distance, uh, and that is an ultrametric distance, and it obeys a different inequality. And it's a little harder to understand and interpret what this means because it doesn't have the familiar triangle to help us out. So in this case, D sub i k is never greater than the maximum of these other two distances. And that's true for you know, all, any combination of distances, any i, j, and k. So uh, how do we interpret this? So let's see if we can simplify it to get ourselves an interpretation. And so we start with this inequality of distances, but instead of distances, let's make it simpler on ourselves by just uh, allowing just arbitrary variables. And so let's say we have three numbers and we'll call them a sub i, a sub j, and a sub k. But we, uh, we have them so that they satisfy the same inequality. And so that means that for any combination of i, j, and k, a sub i is never greater than the max of these other two numbers. Now, let's choose, because these are just ordinary numbers, we can choose an ordering. And in this case, uh, so the real numbers, we can order them. So we have, say, a sub 1 is less than or equal to a sub 2 is less than or equal to a sub 3. Then it follows immediately that a sub two must equal a sub three, because otherwise there's an arrangement where a sub three is greater than a sub two. And when th in that case, that means that a sub three is greater than the max of these other two, and that violates the inequality. So the way to interpret this inequality is that the larger, the two larger numbers must be the same for this to be the case. And that is definitely a special case, and it's going to lead to some consequences in the resulting phylogenetic tree. Now, this algorithm is called unweighted pair group mean average, or UPGMA. And the way it works is as follows. We start with that distance matrix, and we identify the entry that has the smallest distance. And so then we have a row and a column for that entry, and we take those that row and that column, and we join them uh, 
and we we create a new entry uh, that represents the the joined uh, individual entries. What happens is that the pair of individual entries become a cluster, and we now have we now position an interior node exactly halfway between the original entries. We calculate a new distance matrix, and we do that with the cluster replacing the in individual entries, and we do that using an average of all the contributing pairs because this is positioned halfway between the entries. We now have a smaller matrix, and we can repeat the process until we're done. Now, this algorithm is uh, relatively fast, um, or you know, it's efficient. It has a time complexity of um, n squared log n, uh, a kind of a almost a, a, a very simple form of this algorithm would be about n cubed, but it's it's reason it's quite fast. So, uh, what are the results of this algorithm? We get a unique tree. So the algorithm gives us one tree that solves this and satisfies the uh, uh, the ultrametric inequality. It's also rooted. So it's a rooted tree. Um, it's a unique tree. And it's an ultrametric tree. And the consequence of that is that all of the, the tips, the leaves, will be equidistant from the root. Let's go through an example. So this is an example of five S ribosomal RNAs. So there are five entries, five sequences. They're all five S ribosomal RNAs. They've been put into a multiple sequence alignment and the jukes canter distances between all the individual sequence, all the the pairs have been calculated, and we get this distance matrix here. Now, I took this example from Wikipedia, but any small example would do. Uh, uh, you can follow it also on, on Wikipedia without some of the illustrations in the following slides. We can see immediately that the smallest entry is 17 between A and B. So we're going to have to combine A and B with this 17. Let's, follow, let's go forward and do it using the algorithm. So we start here with the smallest distance is 17 between A and B. That immediately tells us we have to combine A and B, and it tells us that the branch length is going to be 8.5 because that's half of 17. So now we can already build part of our tree. We can take A and B and put them together with a branch length on either lineage of 8.5, and this node between them is halfway. Now we have to calculate a smaller distance matrix from this. And in this case, what we do is we say, okay, we now have this new AB and that to C, and that's a combination of A to C and B to C. We have A, B to D, that's a combination of A to D and B to D, and we have A, B to E, and that's a combination of A to E and B to E. So it looks like this. We take these entries, we average them, and now we have a new matrix. In this new matrix, the smallest uh, entry is 22, and that's between A, B, this new cluster, and the sequence E. So that's the next thing we're going to combine. We'll get A, B combined with E and 22. How do we do that? Well, in that case, um, I'm going to show it two ways, uh, and uh, it, it hopefully will make sense how this works. So we start with the smallest distance of 22, but I'm going to use the original distance matrix over here. So let's use that smallest distance. We already know from that that the branch length will be 11. How do we add that in? Well, it's shown over here. We have E and the branch length is 11. We divide that in, so that's 22 divided by two. When, so that's E to the common ancestor of E, A, and B, but because we already have a branch length of 8.5 on the A, B lineage, we only need 2.5 over on the remainder. So that gives us the partial tree. And how do we calculate the distances? Well, we in this case, we can do it the same way. We can take the original entries and we uh, take all the contributing distances and we uh, sum them and divide by the total. Now this is sensible in the sense that it's unweighted, just like the algorithm name says it should be, but it's also a little cumbersome because we're not using the smaller matrix that we went to the trouble of constructing. So with a smaller matrix, we can do it and we get the same result. So the, this case, what we would do is we get take the smaller matrix, the branch lengths are the same, but what we're gonna do is combine just 
two points into this because there are only two contributors here. And so we have the A, B uh, to C and, uh, and the uh, C to E contribute to this A, B, E to C. But they're going to be weighted because there are two points in this original one. So they will get proportions that weight them. And in this case, we then divide by the total um, and we'll get the same result. And the same is true for this other one. This would be uh, a double weight for the A, B to D and a single weight for the E to D. Nonetheless, we get the same results. And now we have this smaller matrix. In the smaller matrix, the smallest entry is now 28 and that's between C and D. So that's quite straightforward, right? We have 28, we already know what to do. We take this, divide it in two to get our branch length, which is gonna be 14. And in this case, that means we just have uh, a pair separated by 28, 14 on either side. Now we have to combine C and D into an internal node, CD. And how do we do that? Well, we can take all the contributing uh, distances, but we can also take the uh, the individual distances from this matrix and give them weights. In this case, the weights are equal. So we might say, well, if we had a more complicated case, we would multiply them both by three and divide by six, but proportionally it's the same as just uh, taking the arithmetic average. So in this case, we get that and we now get this result with 33. This tells us that 33 is the total divergence between these two lineages. And what do we do with that? Well, we join them together and it's quite straightforward with 33 divided by two is 16.5. So that means the total branch length here must be 16.5. That gives us an extra 2.5 here and an extra 5.5 here, and now we're done. So that's an example, a worked example of walking through a UPGMA tree from a distance matrix to the tree itself. I hope you go through this yourselves, but also, I I think it's worth doing a little practical exercise for yourself. So if we go back to this ultrametric inequality, you should be able to see for yourself that in the resulting tree, this holds true for no matter what pair of, no matter what triple of sequences you pick from these five sequences it will hold true. So you can satisfy yourself that that is true and what it would look like if it were not true. Now, for several years, I've used an example from uh, Richard Edwards, who's currently at the University of New South Wales. And he has a really nice website where he walks through a UPGMA worked example. It's a different example, so you can see it there. And he walks through it on a series of uh, tabs on his website. And it's quite nice, um, and I encourage you to go through that. Uh, but this is where I'm going to end with our example. And the next video will be neighbor joining. So we'll look at the other distance-based method, neighbor joining, and see how it differs from UPGMA. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.